Hey guys, today I'm going to take you on a tour of our root cellar. It's more like a cold room, I would say. It's not quite a true root cellar, just because it's not the same humidity and low temperatures as a, a traditional root cellar would have, but it's still a great place to store a lot of um, home canning and root vegetables and non-perishable food items and just to store anything long term and uh, store anything over the winter. So anyways, let's get started. Uh, the room is only about five feet by ten feet, so it's quite tricky to get a good uh, get a good camera angle in here. So bear with me, but I'll do my best. So the room comes out, or this door comes out at the end of our basement hallway. The room actually used to be our home's cistern before it was on municipal water. Uh, 10, 15 years ago, a few owners ago, um, they did extensive renovations in the basement and converted this room in the old cistern into a storage room. And then with a little bit more um, changes, we turned it into some our root cellar, food storage. So anyways, here's the door. And it comes, first coming in on your right hand side, we have this great big built-in shelf that my dad actually built for us. Built it especially for um, home canning. So yeah, up top is where I keep all my, there's some empty boxes in there to fill full of empty jars. And lots of empty jars. Lots and lots of empty jars. And up here, we'll start up here. Um, with some lunch size apple sauces, uh, a few meats and soups for my husband, lots of canned dry beans, lots and lots of canned dry beans. And down here is mostly fruit. I have some apricots, oranges, peaches, a couple different sizes of peaches. Um, as you can see, a few things in here are a couple years old now and they're starting to lose uh, some of their quality like um, these apricots, prime example, they're from 2016 and they're losing a lot of their, their flavor and, and it's starting to get discolored and stuff, but they're still edible. So anyways, um, cherries, pears, some uh, applesauce and some pie filling, some peach pie filling there. Over here is all of my jams and marmalades and chutneys and uh, there's some cherry pancake syrup on the far end there. And this shelf is um, salsas and pickles and things like that. So I have two kinds of salsa, uh, a black bean and corn, and then a green tomato and jalapeno. Lots of pickles, pickled garlic scapes, lots of pickled cucumbers. Um, Bread and butter pickles, zucchini pickles, and a couple different kinds of pickled beets. There's here regular beets. Oh, sorry. Here and then over here was just a different kind of beet. Um, had a white flesh with the dark purple rings through it, and yeah, just pretty much the same as as regular ones. They're just a nice contrast. So um, some pickled coleslaw. That is probably my favorite I would say out of all the things that I can it's one of my favorite things to can and to eat so maybe next year when I make it I'll I'll do a video about it because it's super super swell all my quarts of pickles again uh, bread and butters dill slices whole dill pickles spicy dilly beans and then on this shelf is mostly all my canned vegetables I got some canned uh, just plain canned cabbage in the corner there, plain canned beets, carrots, tomatoes, lots and lots of diced tomatoes. This year, I sorry, last year, I really tried to make sure that I grew and preserved enough of my own tomatoes because every year I always, always run out because we use a lot of them. So, anyways, tons of diced tomatoes, uh, pasta sauce, some canned carrots, canned green beans, canned corn. These two over here, there's a canned. Um, zucchini, shred, uh, sh sh oh my goodness. shredded zucchini and some canned, their beet greens and Swiss chard mix to mixed together. Both are really kind of what I would think unconventional things to can. Both have been really pleasant surprises that I use them quite a bit. Really great additions to, to sneak more vegetables into anything you want to cook basically. The zucchini is also really nice because the pint sized jars are basically a perfect size to add to, uh, um, any kind of zucchini loaf or muffin recipe that you might have. So anyways, both nice additions to your pressure canning list if you're looking for some. And on the bottom shelf here, I have all of my store-bought pantry staples, some a couple canned soups, 
cranberry sauce, um, tomato paste, lots of tomato paste, uh, peanut butter, a couple of pickles, olives, maple syrup, condiments, sauces, lime and lemon juice, all that good stuff. And on the bottom shelf here, I'm not going to get into that today, I'll, I'll make a video about it in the future, but there's my emergency water storage. And turning here a bit, I have this great big heavy duty shelf. Again, like I said, it's hard to get a good angle in this tiny room, but here I keep some more commercial canned things. Um, Vinegars, honey, dog food, plant milk, snacks, all kinds of stuff. Some instant coffee. Here's where I keep all my um, fats, some coconut oil, shortening, all of the things like that. Hemp hearts, nutritional yeast, all stuff that has a long shelf life that we use a lot of. And then on the top two shelves I have all my bigger equipment. So I got my uh, water bath and pressure canner. And then on the top I have my electric roaster and my dehydrator. And quickly before I pan over to the other side, I have here um, my thermometer so I can monitor the temperature in here. This has, it's a two-part system, so this is my indoor temperature it reads, and then on my outdoor, there's one down low near my um, cold air intake. So right now it's a little warmer in here than it usually is at this time of year. It's the second week of January um, because I've been in the room for a few minutes, but when I am not in here, it sits around kind of 11-ish, 12 degrees Celsius, which really is not bad at all for um, a makeshift root cellar. So, and then up here, I have my uh, exhaust vent. Inside of that, further down the pipe, um, there's a, a fan built into it that helps draw some of that out, but yeah. So I have my thermometer and my exhaust. And then kind of panning over to the other side of the room, I have this little shelf in the corner here where I keep um, new boxes of jars and kind of more unused sizes of jars, I guess I should say. All my pints and quarts are um, usually stacked up on the shelf behind me, but these are all my kind of jelly jars and, like I said, new boxes and stuff that isn't used quite as much. So, uh, my snap lids are in there. Up top in that box I have my, all my jar rings. Those two little containers up there um, have all my uh, apple peelers, cherry pitters, jar lifters, canning stuff, all stuff that is yeah, nice to keep down here out of the way. And then here on this wall I have my potato bin. And again, my dad built this for me. Um, I'll do a quick look inside of it. It's kind of hard to see, but there's these little two pieces of plywood for lids. Hard, like I was saying, hard to see inside here because it's a little bit dark, but it's getting a little empty here, like I said, second week of January, so we're starting to use them up pretty good, which is really wonderful because usually I have way too many potatoes left over. Anyways, a little segregated bit on that side, and then just one big open one on this side. It's very massive. I don't know if I'll ever need to grow that many potatoes to fill it, but yeah, really nice, really nice bin that he built me. Uh, and on top, he built me this little, if I can get a good angle, uh, shelf up here to store all my squash and stuff. So. Sweet potatoes, acorn squash, and those butternut squash. I did not grow those. I bought those, but I bought them in season and when they were on sale, so they'll store a really long time and save some bucks when I bought them. So, And those uh, spady squash are from my garden. Those are by far my longest keeping out of anything I, I winter over. So, yeah. Nice little shelf up there. And then here I got the last of my garlic from 2018. It was my first time growing garlic, super happy with that. I'm really looking forward to next year's crop. I planted about three times as much, so. Anyways, and then down here, like I said, here's my cold air intake, and I have a little fan on there as well. Um, and then here is a big Rubbermaid tote where I keep carrots. Um, they have carrots single file or single stacked layered in there with uh, damp sand in between. I think I put six or seven layers deep in this tote. Uh, I can't remember how many pounds of carrots. It was like 60 pounds of carrots I think I put in here, but I dug one out just so you could see. This is, I don't know, like I said, second week of January. This has been in here since the end of September, beginning of October, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Still very firm and 
not wilting at all. And yeah, great way to store carrots. Um, a couple little extra chairs and stuff that I store here. But yeah, like I said, a little hard to get a good shot, but I'm sure you get the point. Our little makeshift root cellar. It's probably my favorite space in the whole house. So, yeah. As always, if you like the video, please be sure to give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. If you have tips on food storage and preservation or have any questions about it, feel free to leave a comment below. And yeah, thanks for watching.